Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I want to go ahead and cover, um, I guess, the weekly beta report that they went ahead and put out. But more importantly, there's going to be 11 new support gems coming up in the next beta wipe. Um, and kind of like their beta release schedule almost. Uh, this doesn't cover their actual release, but this is kind of like how they're scheduling their beta. So let's go ahead and jump right on into it. <clears throat> so the beta has been going on for about a week, so the Fall of Oriath beta has been live for one week now, and we are blown away by how many players have purchased the Fall of Oriath supporter packs and started testing out the new content. Due to the amount of people playing and the feedback provided so far, I've been able to gather a lot of useful data. Um, it's been very helpful. Thank you so much for your time and dedication. This week, we'll be developing the first wave of changes that largely focus on polishing content that is already included, included in the beta, we're also introducing 11 new support gems. So we're going to check this towards the end of the video because I just want to finish this because I'm probably going to forget this. Um, I looked at the support gems briefly on that Reddit teaser data mine thing. I haven't actually seen them on the page, so they may be adjusted a little bit. Uh, below, we've listed some of the core fixes going in the patch. These are not in the patch notes. Oh, wait. These are not patch notes and smaller updates have been excluded from the list. Okay. Players can no longer bypass the magic barrier in the rune square by using movement skills. Kappa. Shock Nova cannot be supported by Echo. I thought it always could. Uh, Vol side areas will no longer spawn in accessible portals. The Adziri portal variation uh, will no longer apply to regular maps. Monsters will no longer leave floating weapons on death. Crimson Scholars can no longer be desecrated. What is a Crimson Scholar? Fix several audio problems including cracking. Or crackling. I think actually my buddy had that issue. Fix an issue where the more fire damage on Chance to Ignite was not working correctly. Uh, the Bloodlust support gem will now properly indicate supported attacks cannot cause bleeding. Bleeds applied by spike traps found in Labyrinth and Trials now deal more damage. Why? GGG. <laughs> you can no longer return to Act 5 boss room. Wait, you can no longer return to the Act 5 boss room completing the fight. Oh! Oh shit! Well, it's a good thing I'm about to create my guide on Katapa here in a bit. Fix an issue with Cluster Trap Support Gem, applying the Less Trap modifier damage twice. That's terrible. Fix an issue where Bannon uh, would output dialogue to chat incorrectly. To chat? Like the Twitch chat, Kappa? Ascendancy Trials Found in Maps can now be interacted with and will show you your current trial completion. That's nice. You can now interact with the Notice Board in Act 7. Our Akali should no longer be able to drop inaccessible loot. You'll now only find one Vol Vessel in a corrupted side zone. Saving your settings should properly save them. We have fixed several characters. Uh, and yes, Ebony Barracks Waypoint has been moved back to its original play or position. Next week, we'll deploy the second wave of updates that will include the remaining Bandit Fights Act 8, an updated tutorial system, and more. We will be wiping beta with the second wave of updates. Uh, so we get good stats on players leveling and entering Act 8 with appropriately leveled characters. We'd also love that you see the content with fresh characters rather than having high-level characters with mapping gear. The third wave of changes will be deployed after, or deployed the week after the next, and will focus more heavily on game balance and polishing existing content. This should also include updates to monsters pack composition. Monsters to pack, include updates to monster pack composition, I guess how they spawn. So I'm curious, does that mean <clears throat> the first wave of changes, the first wave of changes is, is this, and then the second wave of changes, and then the third wave of changes, meaning we're getting the new support gems before the wipe, or did I read that incorrectly? I believe so, right? Something like that? Sorry, I'm retarded. I'm, I'm more like a, I'm, I'm like a brute who just likes killing mobs and is not good at reading. All right, let's go ahead and check out these support gems though. All right. There won't be a character wipe with this beta patch. Oh, no, 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 I was right. Okay, cool. Nice. Nice. Uh, so here we go. The beta for Fall of Oriath has been live for almost a week. Tomorrow we'll release our first beta report that discusses how things have been going so far and what to expect in the future. Later this week, we'll be deploying a patch to the beta realm that fixes some bugs and introduces 11 new support gems. Here we go. Support gem number one, Vile Toxins. Supported skills deal 20% increased damage with poison. Supported skills have 5% more damage with hits for each poison on the enemy up to 6. Supported skills deal 30% more poison damage. Wow, so this seems like a, like a fucking T1 support gem for poison builds. You get an increased damage with poisons, which is whatever. If you attack like super, super fast, you have 30% more damage with your hits, right? 
So 30% more damage. We don't even know if that increases. And then support and skill deals more poison damage because these are level 1. Oh, and the quality. Okay, the increase is just the quality. Got it. Decay support. Um, supported skills of inflict decay, dealing blah, 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 chaos damage per second for 10 seconds. I mean, I'm pretty excited to see this because this kind of pulls out the whole, um, uh, essence of delirium craft on daggers, which forces you into using like a dagger or something else. Well, I guess you don't have to use it on a dagger, but for like whirling blades and stuff, that's pretty cool. I'm excited for that. It looks like an essence actually. Deadly ailments. Supported skills deal 50% more damage with ailments. Supported skills deal 30% less damage with hits. Supported skills deal 10% increased damage over time. It's a pretty interesting, like, hybrid gem almost. Um, but this is good because I think this is kicking out, like, Rapid Decay, so you don't have to use Rapid Decay on a lot of your builds. Lesser Poison. Supported skills deal 10% increased damage with poison. Supported skills have 25% chance of poison. Supported skills deal 1 to 2 added chaos. So I guess this would be mainly for scaling the flat added chaos, and if you didn't need full poison. I'm not really too sure. Um, I've never really been too much of a fan of, like, the percentage chance things to happen, but it does give, like, flat chaos, which is really good. Chance to bleed, uh, which adds flat physical with weapons and increased damage with bleeding. Supported attacks have a chance to cause bleeding. So this is kind of something uh, that's a little different in my opinion, though, because bleeds don't stack, which means if you were to use, like, Bloodlust and Chance to Bleed, you get the Flat Fizz, which I'm guessing is going to scale up to be quite high. And then, um, yeah, you would fucking pretty much... If, I mean, Whites would die in, like, one hit anyway, right? So if Rares get hit four times and then die if you're playing something like Reeve, I think that's okay. That's acceptable damage, right? Uh, you would have, like, Bleed on them, which is pretty cool. Now, this is in, uh, assuming you didn't even pick a Bleed on the tree. So I like this chance to bleed support gem. Ignite proliferation. Um, ignites caused by supported skills spread to other enemies in a radius of 14. So I think 14 is larger than the previous, which was 12. But I think it got buffed to 16. So now it's back to 14. But it does not reduce the damage you deal. In fact, it increases the damage that you deal. Um, which is not a multiplier, but it's still a small increase. Definitely a huge buff to Ellie Prolif. Uh, so I like that. Efficiency? F, -K? F, 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 fuck support gem. Supported skills deal 10% more spell damage. Supported skills deal 15% more damage over time. Supported skills deal increased damage over time. Supported skills have 10% increased skill effect duration. So this is telling me, uh, let's see. Essence strain benefits of spell damage, damage over time, uh, skill effect duration, increased damage over time, blight scales off it, uh, scorching ray scales off it. Caustic Arrow doesn't get the spell damage. I don't think Caustic Arrow would want this. That's still pretty cool, though. I like this. I'm very excited to see, like, hybrid support gems. Because sometimes you want a little bit of both, but you don't want it all, you know? Sometimes your build cannot pick up that skill effect duration in the tree because it's only by Scion, for example. Unbound ailments. Uh, supported skills have 40% increased duration of ailments. Supported skills have 20% increased effect. So this is basically, like... An increased duration, but for ailments, which is OP because it's more specific to them. So I'm pretty curious to see how this works with like freezing or getting like crazy fatty ignites off, assuming it has a purpose there. Immolate? Immolate is one that's really cool as well. Um, the reason why I say that for Immolate is because it adds flat fire against burning enemies, and we have added cold and added lightning, but we don't have added fire. And this is like a PJ Salt added fire. This is level one, it does 47 to 71 already against burning enemies so this is pushing you away from using um like elemental focus this could like literally replace elemental focus i mean i don't really know how much damage it is i don't know how how high like the flat numeric scale so this is something i need to do a little math on uh, but this is pretty cool so far i like this brutality supported skills deal 35 percent more physical damage that's retarded because i'm pretty sure that goes to 56 percent 56 percent more physical damage uh, with a 21. Supported skills deal increased physical, but no elemental. But this is good for scaling poison, right? Assuming poison still properly scales off physical, which I'm going to assume it does. This is like a, this is basically brutality plus vile toxins is trying to push you back to like double dipping almost. Maim support gem. Enemies maimed by supports take 20% increased physical damage. Sorry, I'm reading this out of order. Supported skills deal 10% more physical. Supported skills have 30% chance to maim. Supported skills deal 10% increased fizz. Wow, so this at level 1 is like 30% more fizz because maim is 20% increased damage taken by monsters, which means that that's a multiplier. 
and supportive skills deal 10% more physical damage, I'm pretty sure that 10% goes to like 30%, which would make this another 50% multiplier. Meaning that if you use like Brutality, Maim, Vile Toxins, that's already three. Four Link would be your skill. Melee Physical would be five. Um, you already have like a crazy strong five Link, which is pretty cool. Uh, I really like that. They're like releasing support gems that go in conjunction with each other uh, to prevent people from dying from Alley Reflect. Hello, fucking Melee players. You better be goddamn happy here because we've been bitching about this for years. You know, because it's like, how do I scale my, my crit you know, fucking melee build to the next, the next level. Oh, well, you know, you just insert hatred aura and put in wed and go crit. Well, how do I survive my own reflect? You don't, you die. Well, okay. So hopefully, you know, this will allow us to push into a little bit of a different realm. Uh, hopefully it doesn't force everyone to go poison. I'd like to see some other unique things come out of this, but you know, if that's what we have to do, maybe that's what we have to do. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I was pretty curious to check it out. I'm so far very pleased. I'm excited to see these, especially because we haven't seen the new skill gems that are coming out yet either. These are just the support gems to see how they interact with what we're playing. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys had a wonderful time, and I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.